Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Um, yeah, so here's the uh, long-awaited camp kitchen review. I have to apologise to, to everyone who's been asking me to, to do a review of the kitchen. Um, I've been meaning to do it now for months and months and I, uh, for some reason I've never really got around to doing it. So anyway, here it is. Um, so what I, I wanted to do was, was just upload some footage of the kitchen because there's a lot of people who are asking for plans um, and I don't have any plans. What I'd done when I built this was I just took the the things that I I wanted to put in there, put them on the kitchen table and kind of just measure, measured them and then um, you know built the, the, the camp kitchen around the equipment that I wanted to carry. But what I'll do in the um, description underneath, I'll put the dimensions of the, of the camp kitchen in there. So yeah, um, this thing is brilliant if you've ever camped uh, and cooked out of plastic boxes you'll know what i'm talking about where you you're constantly looking around trying to find utensils and pans and everything's unorganized and um, when it comes to dinner time it's always a bit of a hassle especially when you're doing a long a multi-week overland trip where you're you're kind of cooking breakfast lunch and dinner uh, out the back of your truck um, it can become a, a bit of a pain so having something like this is uh, it's just so it makes life so much easier um, you literally just pull it out of the back of your truck open the doors open the workspace and you, you're just ready to go um, right so if you're thinking about building one of these you need really good quality plywood I mean we're in the UK don't waste your time going to Wix or b and and buying their waterproof um, plywood. It's just, it's great for kind of fixing your shed roof. But if you're making a bit of furniture like this, then you really need to, to get some high quality um, plywood. The stuff I've made this one out of is, I think it's called Robin's Alite Marine Grade Plywood. I think it comes from the manufacturer with a 15 year guarantee. Uh, it's quite lightweight. Um, it's easy to work with if you have to file things down it's not going to split or anything like that it's um, quite lightweight as well those people who have been following the channel for a while will have seen me use an identical kitchen but made out of a, a much darker wood I made that out of um, I think it's called Robin Super Alight um, marine plywood it's proper high grade boat building ply the grain and the finish on it is beautiful but it's just way too heavy um, this plywood is about 30% lighter so I tend to use this one a lot more now than I use the other one uh, just in the house or in the garden um, yeah so what I've done with this a lot of people like to keep the burner inside the kitchen um, I use a cook partner and uh, it, it's, it comes in its own case basically so I just chuck it in the back of the truck and it's fine so I don't have to, to have it in the um, in the kitchen and the thing is if you're if you keep your burner in the kitchen it's gonna increase the weight of it as well which is probably one of the downsides of having a kitchen like this they do actually weigh quite a bit 
Uh, it's best to have someone around, you know, it's, it's a two person job to lift it out of the truck. Um, so yeah, so the plywood, choose good quality marine grade plywood. Um, and don't try and build the entire thing out of 12 mil plywood. What I've done with this, um, the base is actually 9 mil ply, the sides are 9 mil, the doors are all made out of 9 mil, um, the supports here are 9 mil, the shelves are 6 mil. Um, 5 or 6 mil plywood's adequate for shelving. All you're doing is, um, you know, supporting some balls or, or something like that. So you don't need to have, I've seen people have put like 12 mil plywood in there for, for shelves as well and that's just going to increase the weight of the kitchen. Um, so yeah, I've got 9 mil ply on the bottom but then I've put like a strip of 9 mil ply just around the edges about an inch thick and that's just to help protect the bottom when I'm pulling it in and out of the, uh, the pickup truck. I'll just show you what I, what I keep in the kitchen. So obviously on, a, on this side I've got the um, the herbs and spices, I've got my coffee beans, tea bags, salt and pepper, uh, kitchen roll holder there. Now that's just made out of, uh, this is actually uh, a rolling pin that I got from the supermarket that was on sale for like 150. A bit cheaper than buying a uh, dowel. <laughs> so uh, that just fits in there. Um, on the top shelf I've got plates. Everything's held in place by shock cords as well, just for when you're off-roading to keep everything in place. Um, I've got four enamel plates in here, but you can easily fit six in and six uh, smaller plates on top. And down here I've got balls and uh, a hand pull mixer or blender. And on this side I've got a little spoon rest. Uh, collapsible colander and a couple of um, frying pans here now these are I think they're called oh, what they're called uh, the Tefl insignia range and um, so they come without handles and that makes it just easier to, to fit them in the kitchen so these are the handles I've got a couple of detachable handles and here we've got a, a couple of uh, saucepans a large one and a, and a medium one um, yeah the, the handles they just kind of uh, just clip on like that yeah, so that's the Tefl or the Tefal insignia range I think they're called um, I'll put, a, I'll put a link to them underneath if I can find if I can find them on Amazon or, or somewhere. Got a couple of uh, drawers here. This one just keeps my uh, kitchen knives, um, bottle opener and um, a pair of scissors in there. And also there's uh, a couple of hooks now I'll show you what these are for in a moment. And the, the top drawer is just for, for cutlery. So you've got plenty of room on the, uh, the bottom of the kitchen here. I have an enamel pot. Um, coffee pots in there. Couple of wine glasses on each one of these um, pull down shelves as well. I've cut in a little wine glass holder, which is a nice touch. One of my favourite chefs is uh, Keith Floyd, he always liked a glass of red wine while he was cooking. Um, and they've just got simple cupboard clips to just, just to keep them up. Um, the hinges are all stainless steel piano hinges. Uh, I think they were. Um, 25 millimeter and um, so you can just get a hacksaw just cut, cut those down to size they're used on the um, on the, the work the fold out work benches as well um, yeah so this this top space is 12 mil plywood um, and I've got I think it's a two millimeter stainless steel sheet uh, over the top 
you can just buy that online, measure up, you just measure up the size of um, the size that you need um, and then just drill a few holes in it and just screw it in uh, so you've got some protection for the top of the, the kitchen. Um, you can fit a, a larger pot in here if you wished, I mean you can fit like a, a 4 litre Dutch oven in here but I've just got my uh, my little Petromax 1 litre Dutch oven in here at the moment and um, my little coffee grinder and on this side you've just got a, a rack for your utensils and the chopping board fits in there as well so I did um, build this extra kind of shelf in the back here and there's a couple of little holes there and these hooks are quite useful to hang a, a rubbish bag over what I do is just put those through there like that and then if you get a bin liner or a plastic bag you can kind of hang it over there and just come and put your your rubbish in while you're cooking um, you get quite a bit of workspace on the top of this kitchen as it is but just having having this extra bit here I mean the cook partner is quite a big stove it's like 22 inches wide and it takes up pretty much the full um, uh, central workspace of the kitchen but this bit here just you know kind of uh, just frees a lot of uh, workspace up so you'll notice that there's um, a bit of kind of uh, hardware on the box now um, especially on the, on the bottom here it's just basically flight case um, alloy struts and, and corner braces um, I'll Put the link below to i think i got them from flight flightcasehardware.co.uk and um, it's cheap enough actually just to buy the alloy uh, the alloy struts which you can put around the the um, camp kitchen table just to protect it in in transit i've recently just used this kitchen up in norway and sweden for three or four weeks we were there and um, i didn't really secure it in the back of the truck you know i just kind of push it in there and it has taken a bit of a beating but um, you know the flight case gear really does help protect it um, and on the sides I've just got the um, what do you call them spring loaded flight case handles just to lift just to lift the kitchen in and out so if you're thinking about building one of these which I think if you want one you have to actually because there's not a lot of uh, off-the-shelf options available especially here in the UK um, there is one though, if you put Camp Champ into Google you'll see something similar to this but the price tag is uh, I think it's six and a half thousand euros or something so it's quite quite an investment um, putting something like this together will probably cost you somewhere in the region of about 500 pound um, and that's including all the the, um, the steel plating and the hardware and the good quality plywood um, maybe it's a little bit less than that but um, you don't need tons of, uh, you don't need a workshop to build one either. I mean, I don't have one. I've just done this on a 30 pound Black & Decker uh, workbench with some hand tools. Um, although I do have a table saw, which does make life a lot easier when you're doing some of the big cuts. But um, you can easily build something like this for yourself just using uh, hand tools. Um, I have a Japanese pull saw, which is really useful for you know doing the, the smaller bits um, so just a, yeah, just a hand drill a, a decent saw um, yeah you know a hacksaw to cut the the um, the piano hinges and uh, yeah it's not, not too difficult if you if you're uh, into DIY and you you're a little bit handy so um, yeah yeah it's definitely worth having especially if you're doing a you know like a multi-week overland trip and a, a kitchen this size is ideal for you know two people three people four people or a, you know a group of people so yeah um if you've got any questions if you just pop them in the comments uh, box below and i'll try my best to answer them so i think that's it um so as ever thanks for watching and i'll see you again in the next video